Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Tonight we're going to shift some gears here and do something a little different. Um, came home the other night to work on my truck and my wife says, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going to go work on the truck. She gave me that look. We all know the look. Um, she said it's almost the end of, middle of summer and we still haven't got the boat out. So we're switching gears to the boat. I got a Sea-Doo jet boat, twin 717s on it. Uh, the rotary valve went bad. Um, Actually, the, I'll show you the shaft in a minute. There's a little brass gear inside there that shears off. Okay, guys, so here's what I was talking about. Here's that shaft. This is uh, basically this brass gear here is designed to get chewed up so it saves your drive shaft on these Sea-Doo boats. Um, but you have to pull this out of the side of the case. To do that, we're going to make a little makeshift puller. This is going to be our rest against the side of the block. We're going to drill a hole in the end of this. We'll run our screw through here. And then this screw threads into this end of the shaft. As this bolt pulls through and this rests against the, the um, case, this PVC, it's going to pull that loose. So I think we got three, less than $3 in this puller. I don't have to rent one. I don't have to dig one up. Hopefully I won't have to do this again anytime soon, but for $3, I'll throw it in my uh, specialty tool drawer with all kinds of wrenches we've made, different things, different projects, and we'll have it if we ever have to tear it apart again. Um, really interesting thing on this, these sea boats, when I get to that point of, uh, of uh, putting the rotary valve in, the rotary valve, let me show you here. Okay. So this here is your rotary valve. This slides on this gear. This gear is attached to your crank. When this spins around, it goes past each valve, each port. It op it's air, exhaust and intake as it goes around. So as this disc turns, it opens and closes each valve at a time. What happens is you can see these scars on this plate. And you, once these grooves get deep enough, and the other side's a lot deeper, you're getting a lot of blow by. Um, what happened here when the brass gear, these teeth chewed up, some of that got spit through here. Um, anyway, so now we're gonna, we have to pull this gear out, place the gear, place the rotary valve. Uh, there's a base that this butts up against that actually has to be make sure that surface is remachined smooth. Okay, so we got our puller on here, Put my socket on the inside, hold the bolt. I'm going to turn this nut. And if it works the way I planned it, this will pop out. Hey guys, welcome back. We're uh, working out here, working on the Sea Doo Jet Boat 98-1800 Sportster. Not finding a whole lot of stuff on YouTube as far as installing this rotary valve shaft. We're uh, going to kind of walk you through it and hopefully we can do it. Um, everything I read says you're supposed to split the case, get everything out of there. We're just trying to get this going for the rest of the year. So I uh, flushed everything out, ran magnets in there, ran vacuums in there. Took my camera, I have actually a depth stitch little camera snake I can put in there and everything's clean. But I'm just trying to install this uh, rotary valve shaft, get it back in there so we, and we can work on setting the timing with the rotary valve in. I'm trying to show the old one, uh, comparison to the new one, how bad it was scratched up. You can see, obviously the brass gear chewed up, spit particles out the uh, through the rotary valve and scratched it all up. But we will uh, try and get this in. Okay, so the rotary valve shaft goes in the center hole down there. You have to pull it out with a puller, which turned out to be a struggle the way it was. Um, once we get it in, we'll have to uh, put the sir, I call it sir clip or snap ring, whatever you want to call it, back in there, hold it in there. Um, it is splined. 
shaft like a uh, show it to you here so this gear here brass gear rides on the crank um, we gotta get that in there so we might have to wiggle the uh, crank a little bit we're gonna try and slide it in there I'll see if I can do this one handed I'll just, uh, get some of it for you guys see and so like I say I found absolutely nothing online for it so obviously that's sitting in there a little bit now we got to match up our splines with our crank and our uh, our uh, rotary valve shaft you see that white round uh, looks almost like a pulley on the back there we can use that to turn the motor over by hand here I'm gonna pull the plugs out quick to make it a little easier as well um, I'll just turn that freely a little bit so I can line up the uh, splines of the uh, gear here with the splines of the crank and hopefully we can get this slid in there give you an update in a minute so update guys I took my little brass hammer um, granted there's a little brass gear in that thing I want to be very careful I greased up that gear as you saw in the picture put the crank on top dead center that's where I started with it and just slowly tapped that shaft in while I wiggled the uh, that back pulley a little bit just kind of helping them teeth slide in there do it really gently so we don't tear up that brass gear. Once you're done, make sure this motor spins over, no problem by hand. We want to make sure when we're turning this back pulley here, fly motor and call it, you can the motor rotates freely without any resistance. And we can turn it from the shaft as well. So we know it's timing. That shaft there with that with that brass gear being broken off it was letting that shaft turn way too much so it's throwing it way out of time causing all kinds of grief now we got that back in there now I'm gonna have to go get my tools we'll put everything back on top dead center and we'll put the rotary valve in there and show you what that looks like it's really a just kind of like a bit of little metal half moon plate almost is all it is but we'll get you to that and we'll add that to the video when we post it. Okay guys, well that shaft went in pretty quick. Um, went in just really smoothly. I greased that up. Just tapped it in slowly. Like I said, I had the motor on top dead center. And we adjusted that. Now uh, the shaft's where it belongs. We have to put this little sir clip back in there. To hold that basically the retaining clip. That's the hardest part of this whole job once you get the shaft in. Um, then I'll show you the rotary valve. We're going to put that, that on and set the timing. Uh, go over the degree wheel and everything with you. But uh, the timing on these is actually really simple to set. So we'll go through the steps once we get this sir clip on and uh, give you an update. Uh, okay, so like I said before, this has twin 717. So this is the area I got to work in. Got a little bit of leg room back there, but you don't got so many lines, you got to be real careful you're stepping. You're not wrecking anything. Uh, we're going to get down in there and get that sir clip on, and then we'll show you the uh, valve timing. Okay, guys, so we got the our degree wheel on there. I already made my marks here, but you basically get the edge of this bottom port here. Set that at 360 degrees and put a mark. Then we're going to come up here to 147 degrees is what this one's spec'd at. Put our mark there. And we already got the motor. The magneto side piston is at top dead center. So we know we're at top dead center. This is good to go so we can pull our degree wheel off. And put our new uh, rotary valve on. And I'll put a link with the video or just another uh, picture next to it of the old rotary valve. It had tons of grooves in it. In fact, the cover was kind of grooved a little bit. We're going to clean that cover up, remachine it. We'll stick that back on there too. So guys, you can see that mark I got there and how the top edge of that gear is lined up with that mark. Once you get top dead center and you get your 360 mark, your 147 mark, you can line that top edge up close as it fits. Sometimes you have to flip that gear one either over you know uh, upside down and whatever lines up the best and you're you'd be right on time there. Um, now we'll have to, we're gonna clean up our cover, like I said. We'll start putting this back together. We can have this thing probably fired up tomorrow night, I'm hoping. So, 
but that's how you time the Rotax 717. Uh, we got the new shaft in there, new uh, rotary valve now. We'll get everything put back together, and then we will uh, see what happens with this thing. I'm going to show you the cover on this. See these scoring on there, guys? These lines? Your fingernail shouldn't have dug them. Well, actually, we can, you can get by sometimes machining these and get by it for a little while longer. I'm going to see if we can clean this one up. But uh, what happens, stuff gets shot through that motor, metal filings, whatever. Uh, obviously, with that shaft getting broke, that brass gear will chew up and get between this and your rotary valve and really groove it pretty bad. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can get this cleaned up tomorrow and get the rest back on. If you can see in here, I don't know if you can see that, guys, there's a little plastic gear. That's what dries your oil pump. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you learned something on that video tonight on the Sea-Doo jet bolts. Obviously, this is not how I'd like to do this. The best thing to do is you pull the motor out split the case and make sure you got everything out but we uh really uh having this camera set up that i have you can get inside there there was no debris in there we found got all the shavings out vacuum sucked everything out um ran the camera in there found nothing ran the camera down both uh inlets for the uh on the rotary valve face to look where the, where the connecting rods everything really clean everything's out of there um so I feel pretty confident, but uh, this is just how hopefully I can get back on the water yet this summer. And thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night. Hey guys, just a little update on the Sea-Doo jet boat, the '98 uh, twin 720s. Uh, we were doing the rotary valve shaft and rotary valve last time we were uh, out here working. Good news is we got the rotary valve shaft on. Uh, reset the timing without separating the motor. We got everything sucked out of there. Ran my camera in there, no issues at all. Um, very happy with that. Gear slid in, got the retainer clip on. The motor is running flawlessly. Uh, we're going to fire it up, let it here run. But then we had uh, took it out in the water, and the opposite engine was uh, not getting much over 4,500 RPMs. I had a gas leak, fix that. And uh, now a little higher RPMs, but I scoped my cylinders just from the camera just to make sure that I didn't have any issues. Um, I'm going to throw the pictures on this video as well, but you can see the edge of the pistons are starting to disintegrate on this motor. The other one's been rebuilt already. Um, it should be pretty solid, but so we're going to order a top end kit. We're going to go through the next video. We're going to show taking that apart and uh, fixing that one up. So stay tuned. Thanks. Okay, well guys, here's the pistons out of there. Um, as you can see, this was pretty hammered up. I'm glad I took this off. This actually, this top ring is stuck. It's not able to spin freely. Um, just because a piece of that metal is mashed down on it. So I'm just really caught this just in time before it started disintegrating these sleeves. Uh, anyway, we're going to order our kit. And uh, we'll keep you up posted.